Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details. Did you know you can advertise on podcasts? Don't act like you're not impressed. Find out more at podvertise.com.au. That's podvertise with an s.com.au. Jared Walsh, lovely bloke. He's been around for ages. He's lovely. Oh, mate. Hey. Hey, Jared, I love him. He's a cracker. <laughs> and world tennis number three, Andy Martins, had to... Andy Murray, even. Well, it doesn't matter what gets in the way. We will never let our members down. And against all the odds... We're here today to bring you another round of best team men. And I'm looking at Jared Walsh. How are you? We've got so many questions. So many questions. Well, heaps of questions, mate. Heaps of questions. Andy, how are you? <laughs> I'm doing very well. Um, we're obviously looking at each other on screens right now. I feel like we're going back about a month and we're all in quarantine for some yeah. reason. I feel like the press box. It ep- feels really weird. Why, why are we doing this? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's The weird thing is... Is like okay, so let's be honest with our um, our key members. That uh, like a couple of weeks ago, re- we recorded two best team men and a booze team men in the one day. Now this is because Matt was going into hospital for something, and it feels like ages since I've seen you guys, and I'm really emotional about it. It's great to see you both, Andy. How are you going? Yeah, good. Um, I, I can back up that emotion because last week I felt like that um, we'd broken up. Or something like that, you know, because we hadn't seen each other in like a week. Um, apart from that, I'm going very <laughs> sorry, well. Sorry, sorry, guys, I was under anaesthetic. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, uh, I just see these photos come through of like some, I don't know, something that like a a bloody chewy had been spat on the ground, and someone picked it up and then measured it, <laughs> uh, and then you sent us a photo of that. Yeah, we can get to that. You know, you know that time when you actually you think like. You're right, Andy. You go, yeah, I wonder what would happen if I break up with my missus. Like, do you reckon I'd miss her that much? And then you're kind of doing that with, I, w- I wonder if like, do you guys do that? Or is it, oh, like if you um, think like, oh, <laughs> oh. I, wonder if, um, I wonder if best team men broke up, would people miss us? And you're like, yeah, yeah. We got a couple of real weird listeners who wait every week for this and we basically get them through their day. And we love that. We love that people are waiting to hear us and we can't let them down. So Sorry, Andy, I cut you off because we were talking about Matty's disgusting image that he sent. He had something up his backside. Mate, talk us through what happened. I had nothing up my backside for a start. Can we just clear that up? <laughs> <laughs> that, that, came, that came a week later after I was so... Bl- no, that's a different story. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, uh, I spent a couple of days, I think I mentioned um, on one of the older episodes that I was redoing the flooring in my house and... My back pulled up, yeah, really sore from that and so sore that I'd herniated a disc in my back to the point where it was protruding and hitting my spinal cord. Can I ask a question? What does herniated mean? Does that mean it's been squashed or like pushed out or whatever? Yes. Yep. That's pretty much exactly what it means. Okay. Yeah. I'm a doctor. Yep. So, so, so normally- uh, <laughs> I'm Lyndon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Dr. Lyndon. Dr. Lyndon. So normally um, if someone herniates or slips a disc, it sort of just- goes out parallel. Um, mine had come out, and, and they usually say that about 0.5 of a centimetre will actually herniate. Um, mine was two whole centimetres, and it actually started going um, downwards in my spine. So, Shit. yeah, I did a pretty good job. Yeah. Do you remember the moment that you injured yourself, like the actual moment that it still went bang? No, not really. No, it just progressively got worse and worse, the pain, and then over, um, I think, I flew out to Port Douglas a few days after. I don't think sitting on a plane for three hours helped. So, yeah, it just progressively got worse and worse. And the um, I'd lost feeling basically below my knee in my left leg. So, yeah, a bit scary. I was sitting with my missus at breakfast um, the, the morning that you <laughs> sent that photo. And I said to her, because I want to share things with her. I'm like, yeah, I'm yeah. going to see something disgusting. And she's like, no, I don't. I said, no, that's easy. It just looks like a little chicken nugget out of Maddie's back. And she said, I don't want to see that. And I'm like, so is what you're saying, you want to see that? And she said, no, I don't want to see it. I'm like, all right, I won't show you. 
oh, look at this cute photo of Rain, my daughter. So I'm showing her <laughs> your image and she's sitting at the cafe going, oh, 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 oh. It's disgusting. It, it was absolutely hideous. I need to ask one question very quickly, and this is a question without notice. The, the setup that we've got here is um, professional. I mean, Andy's professional. He's sitting in the Ozcast studio. Thank you very much to Ozcast. Of course, Con and Lena at Brighton Trophy Centre, Stavros, Minor Movement Physio, Shifty Lizard, um, Odd Sock Mob, still waiting for the socks, but we, I've got a call, Ash. I haven't done that for a few weeks. Um, Matt, I'm yep. at home. Yep. And Andy is in the studio drinking what looks like he's got hydrolyte or Barocca in a water. I have a um, uh, the headphone case. <laughs> what over is that? My is that- microphone. To <laughs> my, it's like my mic sock. Okay. But- but you're you're sitting there. Yeah. With what looks like the most high tech microphone, but I don't think that is actually plugged in or working because in my head, <laughs> in my headphones, it sounds like you are talking through your laptop. I don't think your mic is actually connected to the Zoom. No. Do you it, hear that too, Andy? It's just like those photos, I don't know if you saw a few years back of David Getter DJing and nothing's plugged in. It's I just think, like that. I think you were actually, <laughs> do you remember that guy, Andy, I showed you that the, the YouTube singer who like, Matty, there's this YouTube singer. If you get a chance, his name's Michael Constantine and have a look. And he's like doing these like as live cover song mashups. And there's <laughs> one of him standing on the beach in the water with a microphone on a stand. And Andy and I are watching <laughs> it going, you are going to get fucking electrocuted, mate. And <laughs> he tries to make it like it's real. So is this a prop you've got? No, so let me explain to you my setup. I've got Zoom on my phone and I'm listening and talking through my headphones, (laughs) but the microphone's actually recording the audio straight into Ableton. So that way it'll be good quality when you actually hear it on the Zoom on the podcast. And we can do a remix at the end as well. Yes. So don't worry, it'll it'll sound better. So I've I've got a list of stuff and I think I think because we never planned this. I reckon what we need to do is basically like a topic roulette because I've been writing stuff in my phone like for, for weeks. So I'm going to give you a list of a couple of things because I've got plenty to get to. I'm sure you do as well. Um, a couple of heads up. I got a photo from Con the other day from Brighton Trophy Centre that had, again, everybody's name on a piece of paper that is on the plaque. And he wrote, Oh, wow. Oh, wow. Maddie was never going to get around to it. So Con's started getting to do it. So Con's gone back and listened to every podcast to get their names. Matty, when oh. you can leave the house and you can walk, we are going to catch up with him. So Con and Lena, um, yep. we love you. And you both have stuff to get Amazing. through. Andy's been crook as a dog. That's probably why you're having a yellow drink. Maddie, uh, you've done some weird stuff as well. So here is my Maddie. roulette of topics. First of all, my wife is a cheat. Number two. Port Adelaide best and fairest, two very unique things. Topic three, Matthew's bottom. <laughs> well, so, I mean, so far it sounds like they all relate to the same thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My wife cheated, Matthew's bottom. <laughs> yeah, at the Port Adelaide best and fairest. <laughs> um, um, Halloween. And the last one is... About your eyes. That's all I'm going to say. I've also got wisdom with Walshy. So there's all my stuff. What are you boys going to choose to start us off with? Well, I'm going to bring up the fact that you did the State of Origin last night. Yeah. Now, you, when you go to a port game and do what you do there, yeah. all right, you're generally wearing some jeans and sneakers and a hat and polo shirt and just kind of look like you're going to catch up with your mates. But last night, you had to wear a suit. Yeah. Yeah. And it... Run me through that. You can't tell me rugby league is more, <laughs> you know, more up nose than, than AFL footy, surely. Well, mate, th- this is the thing. When they contacted me, first of all, I never expected to get asked to be part of State of Origin. I was very, very comfortable with the fact that they would fly over a crew, which does all the NRL stuff. I'm not a huge NRL guy. Like, I love watching say. State- are you? Oh, far out, man. I thought Matty was going to take his pants off. Um, Sorry, I just had to stand nah, up. No, it's fine. Uh, look, I'm not a not a huge NRL guy, but I, like a lot of other people, I watch Origin, which I think a lot of people do. However, then they, they said we'd like to have a local presence, which is great because South Australia isn't an NRL market. Traditionally, it's not the number one sport here. So they have someone like me to to kind of be the person who is the, the fan 
that learns along with the crowd. And they had an expert in there, Zach, who was great to work with. And I messaged them on, on email and I'm like, hey, guys, cool. What do you want me to wear? They're like, oh, I just wear a suit, shirt and pants. I'm like, yeah, sick. Um, do, is there a hat? You, you've a got hat? history with that though, don't you? <laughs> yeah, yes, I do. Like, is, is there a hat? <laughs> And they're like, nah, no hat. I'm like, that's fine. I'll give my head a fresh shave. And I did that. And I got worried because I was there from one o'clock in the afternoon doing this rehearsal, um, which <laughs> I did this rehearsal because just before that, I had to film something for Football South Australia with Tom Wren from Channel 9. And Tom had just had eye surgery. And um, it actually looked like he was winking at me the whole time. And he looked like... <laughs> <laughs> So you've got yeah. you've got Tom Wren standing on a box next to me with what looks like pink eye, and it was disgusting. And he's like, "Hey, mate, be honest. Can you notice it?" And I'm like, "No, nah, mate, you can't." Even see it. <laughs> like, everyone can fucking notice yeah. it. <laughs> so, <coughs> sorry, I digress. I digress. So, um, yeah, th- this is the thing, though. Uh, I was fine wearing it. The sun was out a little bit yesterday. I thought my head was going to get burnt. I, as we spoke about last round, we had some people get in touch, say, hey, thanks for talking about losing your hair and a, it's a weird time and all this other shit. I'm fine having a, a shaved head now with the pit bull shaver that you showed me what to get, Maddie. Brilliant. The weird good, thing was good, aren't they? I feel like I've blown out a little bit. So you know when you feel unhealthy and you feel a bit fat? Guys. Mate, I can't get out of bed. So, yes, yeah. yes, I feel every bit of that right now. Every day. Um. Yeah, so I'm standing I haven't there exercised going, for a month. I'm looking at this guy next to me, Zach. He's beautiful, got great hair, and um, he's, you know, really athletic. And I'm like, fucking hell, mate. People will be thinking, why is Billy Brownless emceeing the NRL State of Origin? (laughs) (laughs) It wasn't Zac Efron, was it? I tell you what, Moby's let himself go. (laughs) (laughs) Is that, geez, Carl Barry? Oh, yeah. So, look, guys, um, just to wrap that up quickly, it was was an incredible event. Like, NRL put on an amazing – they would have spent so much money with, like, the flames coming out of these canisters around. I was standing next to one of the flames, and you could feel the heat. The guy's like, get out! And I did. Um, it was it was amazing, and I'm I'm really glad to be a part of it. It was a bit weird wearing a suit because I'm not I'm not usually a a suit guy. Do you think that the uh, the they're going to try and do an Adelaide Rams style thing here? No, no after chance. This? Nah, nah, I don't think so. I think I think Adelaide is um Adelaide is a, a festival kind of city. Which is a great thing that the Super Loop and the Tour Down Under aren't coming back for a while. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, yeah think, around, the, the, the best example of that is Adelaide <laughs> United. Like in their semi final back when we won the championship, there were ten thousand people at Cooper Stadium. The next weekend at the grand final, there were fifty thousand at Adelaide Oval. Then our first home game, there were seven and a half thousand. So we like we get around we get around events. Yeah, so we basically yeah. bandwagon. Everything. And why not? It's not going to be back here for a while, so people got around it, which um, which is really good. I wonder why uh, the AFL invests so much money in sending teams up to you know Greater Western Sydney and the Gold Coast, but the NRL they don't have any plans to expand, do they? Nah. They don't try and hit markets like Tasmania and Adelaide and even Perth. I think they know. I think they know their patch. The weird thing was like you talk about state of origin and Andy. State of origin is a sport part of um, rugby, and rugby is also a sport. Oh, yeah, yeah sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and Andy's thinking of that. Sorry, I thought we were talking about dress <laughs> shopping for a second. Andy thought of. I thought you were talking about that that show Plate of Origin, that My Kitchen Rules one. That, yeah. that the the acronym yeah. is actually Poo. <laughs> <laughs> um, they, they know they know their area, but State of Origin, like if you're born in Victoria and you play for Melbourne Storm, you can't play State of Origin. No, like it's a it's a weird, oh, really? weird kind of yeah. You, you can't do that. So Dustin Fletcher would have been able to play for Victoria, but he doesn't play NRL and cool. um, he's Victorian. Maddie, it's so funny. If anybody's watching this video stuff, Maddie's just moving around every two minutes because of his back. It is hilarious. It's like we're on chat roulette and we're waiting for a dick to come out. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I thought he was just bored. <laughs> <laughs> no, I actually I, I actually can't sit right, in the same here. spot for more than a couple of minutes. I was like, uh, <laughs> start to ache. It. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so Andy, what's been going on, mate? You, you need to give us a bit of a life update. I've got so much shit to get through, which I still can in this game of roulette. But what's been happening with you, man? Uh, well, I've been sick. Um, yeah, sick, bro. Like uh, for the last 
Yes, sick, bro. Uh, no, for the last week, uh, I had something which we think is food poisoning, um, where I had some Asian food, then the next day, uh, literally just cramps central in my um, in my uh, intestines for a couple of days, and I was literally bedridden, and it was very bad. Uh, but now everyone at home is sick as well because uh, the boys, as they do, come home from their dads on the weekend, and they're always sick, um, and they came with croup. And completely fucked up the rest of the house. Apart from me, so good. What's um, croup? What's fill me so, in on what croup is? Uh, croup's like a a real shit house cough. Right. Okay. We used to work with someone who sounded like they had croup when they coughed. Oh, oh. oh yeah, 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 yeah. When she used to cough, it was yeah. It was like you, you know where she was because she was oh, oh, like in the background. <laughs> Like, she could have been down getting a coffee at Chibo. We could hear Wait, her. Someone needs to contact the zoo and let them know a seal has escaped. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, no, it's just her. Okay. So, um, so it was that bad for the boys that they ended up getting hospitalised on uh, Sunday morning and Monday morning um, because their airwaves had pretty much just shut. So um, that was good. So they came home like that. So that's really, that's been a fantastic week at home. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that, that's been great. Um, but... I think something happened um, on Best Team Men. We spoke about that cinema where uh, they had opened it up yes, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. for me to have a private session watching Step Brothers, and I was never, I was, I was always told to never tell anyone about it because if they found out, uh, they could get possibly uh, fined a lot, like thousands and thousands of dollars um, from the uh, people that made the movie, as well as fucking the place that they work for. Anyway, that cinema closed down the week after we spoke about it on the on on the podcast. <laughs> like literally shut down, they had moved everything out um, and like they spent millions. It was only four years old, five years old. So there you go. So things are well there. So is that our fault? <laughs> yeah, I don't know. It, <laughs> just, was it's it was just very well timed. Let's just say that. Um, <laughs> but yeah, no, it's just been lonely without you guys here, really. Yeah, it's been a bit weird. I think I, I need to address something as well because we, we spoke about – Maddie's obviously a patient at the moment and I, I want to get to your ass in a second. Um, and I, I think it's kind of a nice tie-in right now because um, we – we listening back to this, like in the booze team men that we do, which is our podcast when we have, have a couple of drinks and I listened to a really serious podcast the other day um, that Dylan Buckley does. He's a, I listen to it all the time, but he did it with a guy who actually survived two bouts of cancer. It was – insane listening to his. So he had uh, testicular cancer and then after five, they basically wait for five years until they clear you. And then a couple of weeks after he was cleared, he got bowel cancer and it was nuts. And I think it's important. I'm just doing this for my sanity here because I felt so bad. I think it's important to say that in the the booze team men that we did, we were talking about um, something that happens to your bottom at times when you um, have- Oh yeah, when I bled from the ass. Exactly, that part. Something yep. we didn't say in that because we were having a laugh because we both experienced um, the, you know, hammers. Um, I think it's important <laughs> to say if you were listening to that and you do experience that, we are doctors, so go to the fucking doctor. <laughs> like, that's something we missed in the whole thing. We cannot tell you what to do. Our advice is see a doctor and let them tell you what's up, and not booze team. Or men. just send the photos to Jared. I'm sure he'll give a bit of feedback. <laughs> yeah, send, send, send them to uh, jared at webmd.com.au. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> Remember, we used to go back through Maddie. And I, Andy, you were part of this as well, the messages we used to send to one oh. another. We looked at our back catalogue of images. It was wow. horrible. So yeah. talk about, can, how how much can you talk about your bottom here? Oh, it's not my bottom. Talk it's me or Maddie. <laughs> yeah, who are you talking to here? <laughs> 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 uh. no, it's, it's, it's oh. actually, it's in the small of my back. So, um, I mean, I'm happy to show you guys, but uh, it's, yeah, it's in the middle. No, I'm talking about what happened a couple of weeks later or a couple of days later. Oh, yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> yeah, so um, obviously, yeah, for anyone that's had a general anaesthetic and then spent a few days on, um, uh, you know, endone and all that sort of stuff, it can be quite hard to pass um, or get your bowels moving and all that sort of stuff. So, <laughs> um, yeah, and I found this really difficult. So I went into hospital on the Wednesday and it was Saturday they were going to let me out, but they wouldn't let me out until I had a bit of movement through my bowels. <laughs> and uh, which, which, by the way, I was going to make a food truck and sell bowels and call it bowel movement. But um, 
That's another story. Oh, that sounds delicious. Yeah, um, yeah I know. I'd grab a couple. <laughs> so, <laughs> so they wouldn't. Loyalty they card. wouldn't. They wouldn't let me leave. I couldn't actually leave the hospital until I, for lack of better words, <laughs> done poo. Um, and I just, I didn't feel like I needed to go. And the worst thing was, is from Wednesday to Saturday, I had just been eating absolute shit. So. Oh, I, not <laughs> your internet just turned to shit then. How's your, how's your dial up internet going there, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> All we heard was, yeah, yeah, so it didn't need to poo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Speaking of tunnels, I'm going through one right now. <laughs> <laughs> Into my fake microphone. <laughs> it'll, be, <laughs> it'll be clear on the audio recording, but anyway. Okay, all right. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, um, the lady said, we can't let you leave. Here's a couple of enema sticks. Have a go. <laughs> So I had to go. Why? It comes in a stick. Yeah, so it's like these little... Ch- like a syringe. It looks like Selly's, like those little Selly's all clear packets. Like, you know, oh, yeah. they look like that with a little <laughs> nozzle on You wouldn't want to get that wrong. No. <laughs> <laughs> what if you put the no gaps yeah. in there? <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it's actually done the opposite now. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so, so they, they give me two of these little nozzle looking things and a little thing of lube and they say uh, go into the go into the toilet and have a go. So I did. And it was great. Was the lube at least flavoured? Don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I didn't taste it. This, is, this right. has been one of those podcasts where I think we we've got the most questions ever to ask. Mate, you, mate. bring it on. I think, I'm, I think we need to have like I'm an open book. I'm not going to hold right. anything in, back. In um in in press box ep fashion, yep. let's do some sort of like kind of press conference here yep. where Andy, let's go back and forth and ask a couple of questions about this. So, right. first of all, um I'd, I'd like to go. I've got a question. Yes, um, a, did you enjoy it? The enema or the operation? The uh, no, no, no. We're talking about what happened afterwards. Now, when you couldn't pass, and when you finally passed, did you enjoy it? Yeah, I it? did. Yep, and it's uh, yeah, it made me probably want to do that even when I'm not backed up. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, um, Andy from Anus Australia. Um, <laughs> at what point, yes, Andy? Uh, Ass away. <laughs> that build up <laughs> and then the uh, the point where it's released. What did yep. that feel like? Uh, um, was it like? Is it like? Um, have you ever weirdly? Is it pleasure seen, or is it just a thing uh, that happens? Uh, and you're like, oh. no, it was um, it was relief. But I think if you remember that uh, real early on Superman, where he saves that kid from that damn wall bursting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I feel like that's what it would have looked like. So yeah. you're Superman taking the enema stick away just in time uh, for it to come. Just all out. in time. Wow. No, it happens. It happens about forty five seconds to a minute after you've uh, squeezed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So you kind of you kind of got to get it. You got to get it up there. You got to squeeze and then just sort of hopper over the toilet. Yeah. Yes, Jared. Uh, hi, hi, hi. Yes, yes. Sorry. Um, uh, my name is a uh, first name Hemmer, last name Royd. Hemeroid here. Um, now I was uh, just inquiring. Um, are these uh, enemas uh, available over the counter at a chemist warehouse? If we were thinking of doing this on the next booze team, then. Um, I'm not. I can't confirm that. I have sent my wife out to look for them, um, and I, I do believe that you can get them at Chemist Warehouse. Yes. Yeah. Right. Hi there, yeah. uh, Pete yes. from Prostate yes. uh, Magazine. Um, <laughs> hey, Pete. <laughs> I'm assuming that you're quite clean afterwards, right? Yes. How, how long did that clean feeling last for until sort of you're back to normal or whatever? <laughs> um, the clean feeling and the relief uh, lasted about oh, probably half a day. Yep. And then after that, it was just floodgates were opened and, um, yeah, you know, the next 24 hours after that was really ordinary, to be honest. So, yeah, not good. Yeah, g'day. It's uh, Peter Van the Party Man here specialising in balloons and balloon knots. Um, I was just in... Inqu- <laughs> sorry about your saw. <laughs> sorry, yeah, sorry, it closed down. <laughs> Awkward. Um, <laughs> now, I just wanted to know, uh, did you have to put in the said uh, item into the area or did someone do that for you? No, they give it to you to do yourself. So you have to, uh, yeah, do it yourself, which is a bit weird. What's that? Now, I'm assuming, sorry, follow-up question yep. from Peter Van the Party Man, yep, believe it or not. Um, I am assuming that that is the first time that you've had something 
enter you as opposed to exit you. Was that a bit, um, I, I guess... Whilst I've been awake, yes. Was that a, a different experience uh, because you're not doing it for pleasure, you're doing it for um, basically evacuation. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, look, it's fair to say the first one took a little bit and then uh, the second one was quite easy. <laughs> <laughs> Hi there, Brian from uh, Bleaching Monthly. Um <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Brian. <laughs> so this is this is what we're doing. Isn't it? It's a news conference. It is. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit. Um, uh, I forgot my question now. Oh. Um, but back on the point that you said, not uh, the first time that you've had it done awake. Yes. Um, does that mean this has happened many times when you have been sleeping, like you've been hanging out with Bill Cosby or something? <laughs> <laughs> No, no, it doesn't mean that. Was it like just, part of the operation or whatever? It just means I've had yeah other operations and stuff like that. Which oh man, wow, yeah. Because so. I know I know myself. Um, when I've had to, I've had to use a, a suppository once, and I thought I'd put it in, um, and literally you have to kind of shelve the little tablet thingy, right? If you haven't put one in before, and um, I thought it was in, and I put it in, and then went and sat down, watched some TV, and then I've passed out and been rushed to hospital. Basically, my nervous system freaked out that I was putting something in my butt and I've passed out. That's what the doctor said anyway as he laughed. Um, so did anything like that happen to you at all? No, nothing like that happened to me, which was good. So, um, okay, yeah, I was, it was the first time I've ever done it. So I was quite unsure about what I was meant to feel or what was meant to happen. Yeah, so like you don't know when it's going to happen either. No, nah, the nurse just gave them to me and said, <coughs> hit this with a bit of confidence and see how you go. So... <laughs> <laughs> you know when? Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. Okay, so here's the deal. If we get one <laughs> in the next couple of weeks, I will do it. Perfect. Yeah, I'll give it a crack. Yeah, I'll send you a photo <laughs> of what they look like and, uh, yeah, away you go. All right. Okay. I, I tell you what, it's, it's almost disappointing that we're not in the studio today. I this know. is by far the favourite, like the most favourite round we have, I've ever done. I haven't laughed this much and we're only halfway through. Yes, Andy, you had another question, or whoever you are. Yeah, I had another question. I've forgotten it, so carry on. <laughs> oh, well, we can ask. We can ask many more. If you've got any listener questions as well, how do you hit us up on social media? Uh, at Best Team Men on Twitter, as you would know, and at Best Team on, on Instagram, <laughs> Facebook.com forward slash Best Team Men. In a very soon, Andy, we, we're going we're gonna to ask you in a second, Andy, about the photo which has gone viral on the Twitter of you with a, a famous. Um, he's big in Hollywood and big uh, in the, the cabaret scene as well. It's incredible. If you haven't seen the Best Team Men Twitter account yet, Andy, you need to have a look. It is hilarious. No, I haven't actually looked since we last recorded. <laughs> okay, so don't don't look at it yet. We okay. need you to look at this live to see how it was. All right, so uh, I, I'm going to quickly get through two of these things. First of all, do you want wisdom with Walshy now to kind of yep. Um, yep. to straighten up a bit? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay, if, if this is the first time you've heard this. Um, this is me trying to connect with my with myself and understanding myself a bit more and how human beings work because I love this with my time out of radio. It's, it's funnily enough, it's radio ratings day today and um, you, you have a cheeky look to see how the station you work for is going and competitors and stuff and it's great. I never really took radio ratings too seriously because I'm always like, huh. It's a fascinating thing because the boss tells you what to do and if you do it, that's all you can control. And they're like, listen to everything I say. And then when the ratings come in and they're not good, they're like, we are changing our minds. It is your fault. It's a, a very strange thing. Um, yeah, after, after a few years, you've got to uh, essentially um, uh, take any emotion out of it because it's going to send you absolutely gaga because it's based on such a not a real thing at the same time. Yeah, exactly, mate. So I'm, I'm learning more about uh, real people and human effects. And I said, I'm going to bring in something called Wisdom with Walshy every round. So, boys, I've got two for you, and they are both serious. So the first one is a quote which I heard, which I really liked. And funnily enough, I listened to three hours of Kanye West speaking to Joe Rogan. Three hours. It was amazing to listen to. Once I got through the hour of ads at the start, the rest was absolutely incredible, but it's worth it. And Kanye West is quite a polarizing person. However, I think in some ways it would be a really nice, a nice feeling to be so strong in your beliefs of something to not have to question anything else. If you are so, he's so firm on his be beliefs in, um, in uh, religion, in how the world works and it's polarizing, but 
I think it'd be a nice sense of having peace to go, this is what I believe. And that's why I think sometimes because I'm not heavily religious or I don't heavily believe in certain things, it's a, it's a conflicting time sometimes. Yeah, I think one thing that I took out of it, because I, I listened to it after you mentioned how, how good the chat was or how interesting it was anyway. Um, yeah. It wasn't until maybe halfway through when Joe said to Kanye, he explained to the listener why Kanye is the way he is and when Kanye talks, 90% of people are polarised by it, but actually what you've got to realise, you've got to understand the person before you understand what he's saying and basically yes. the fact that he's saying a lot of things at once and it's all layered and once you yep. start to realise that, you can understand him a lot more and you know what, like I came out of that podcast uh, thinking about other people in my life that I think yep. are absolute dickheads uh, but I've realised, no, they're not. They're just speaking in a different way and that there are the ways of actually speaking about things and it made sense. And that the first half of that podcast then made sense when I listened back to it, if you know what I'm saying. Yeah, the way you described it, like, and you know this, boys, because you've had a lot of stuff to do with music creation. It's like layering all of your songs or bits when you're producing a song. And he, Kanye calls it, he thinks as a symphony. That's his way of describing his thought process. So um, I think you listen to it, you go along for the journey. So one of the things I took out of that was um, a quote, which uh, everybody in 2020 is about uh, gratitude. Um, the way that you can look at things is count the blessings and not the losses. So if something doesn't go your way, think about the things that actually have gone your way and be grateful for them. But this is the big one. So we live in a win-loss society, right? We live in wins and losses. That's how basically people measure success. And I think as a parent now, I look at um, a lot of parents when it comes to things like um, seeing my daughter go to swimming and um, seeing some competitive parents out there talking to parents who take their kids to, to soccer or to, to football, whether it's Oz kick or like things like that and seeing that they expect their kids to be the best. And I don't want to name drop here, but um, I spoke to Gavin Wanganine at the Port Best and Ferris. So Gavin- oh, <coughs> Drop. Yeah. yeah, sorry, sorry, sorry. And it's weird, it's weird because I, I idolized Gavin Wanganin growing up. Like I had a photo, like a poster of him on my bedroom ceiling. And it's a bit weird, but I'm there. Yeah, I know. I'm there talking to him. Um, and he was talking about his son, um, Tex. Now, his Tex has uh, Tex has the surname Wanganin, obviously, so people think that he's got the pressure on him to go like this. And one of the things I was talking to him about was that – the quote that I heard on this podcast was um, it, changing the language that you speak to people about the win-loss mentality. There is a huge difference in how you communicate to someone, I love watching you win, because straight away that makes them think, well, what happens if I don't win? So are you saying you're only going to give me approval if I win? What happens when it doesn't go my way? So the wisdom with Walshy quote is to change the way that you communicate to people is by saying, I love watching you play. That is such a huge shift in meaning, but not a huge shift in language. So say, Andy, saying to your kids, I love watching you swim. Or Maddie, if you know, when you have kids one day, if you're, you, you go to footy with them, I love watching you play because then they go, fuck, no matter what happens, the person loves watching me do it. I love, I love listening to you on the radio. I love listening to you play. I love listening to your music. Not, I love your good songs. I hate your shit ones. It's, I think it's a huge shift. Does it make sense to you guys? Yeah, it yeah does. absolutely. Yeah, definitely. It, it takes the emphasis away from result-driven um, scenarios. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Well, there's your wisdom with Walshy. Now no, I'm going to get to the Port Best and Ferris. It's very weird. Thanks, boys. Thank you. Woosa. We'll get a sing when we're in the studio next. <laughs> yes. um, so Port Best and Ferris. This leads me to the most unique end of a night I've ever had. Um, my missus and I went there. It was an, an amazing night. It felt very community. I was sitting next to uh, Stephen Williams, who is a Port legend. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, and, oh, by the way, my missus just, just started snoring. It's the worst. I'm sleeping on the couch at the moment because she snores because she's full prego and gonna... she says that her lungs are all pushed together. It's yeah. – oh. Anyway, so we were sitting <laughs> um, next to Stephen Williams. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> no, I know. It's just weird. Um, so also sitting next to Dan, who is otherwise known as uh, Pressure from Hilltop Woods. Legend, right? So I've had a bit to do with him just through interviews and um, doing stuff at Adelaide 500, rest in peace. Um, so he's amazing. And the weird thing was you, he's so known as pressure, but 
I'm calling him Dan the whole night because I think it's a respect thing as well. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah. then you get to Matt, who is Safa, and then you ask about Debris, who's Baz. And um, <laughs> he's, he was brilliant. We had a really nice table, people going up to him asking for autographs. No one came up to me, which is totally fine because I think they thought I was Warren Treadray. So <laughs> they... But, <laughs> We got to the end of the night and it was really weird because I, I was standing up and I was having a drink. COVID Marshall came and told me, sit down, not allowed to stand up having drinks. It was that kind of COVID night. I was about to leave and I've gone to the bathroom with a friend of mine. Now, this friend of mine has come to the bathroom with me and then he's walked down. He's like, mate, I want you to try something before you go. A friend of mine's just given it to me. So he's looked at me and he's looked around like to see if anybody was watching and he's put his hand into his jacket pocket and pulled out a little sandwich bag. What's in it? Traditionally, what do you believe is in this in this moment? A sandwich. Uh, <laughs> according to a, any other awards night that I've ever been to, usually a whole lot of explicit substance. That's what I thought when he yep. was suggesting that. But he, in his shady way, has looked around and he's like, just, just try this, mate. And he's pulled out a sandwich bag. Of salami. Oh, what? <laughs> what? What? I see it. I see it. Doesn't that shit need to be refrigerated after? How long has that been what? in your jacket for? <laughs> I said, what the fuck is this? And he's like, oh, the guy I brought, he always hooks me up with a supply of salami. And it's actually this cut up salami that he's passed to me. The warm salami in his oh. warm hand, and I'm trying it. Going, oh yeah, it's good, man. <laughs> it was. Oh. I I didn't know what to expect. So he's being shady around these toilets at the convention center, bringing out of his suit jacket pocket a bag salami. of salami. <laughs> was the bag all greasy and slimy? And yes, yeah. yes, it was such a weird experience. Yeah, that is. So weird. I asked the next day a mutual friend. I said. Look, I've got to ask you this question. It's going to sound a little bit strange, but just go with me here. So last night at the Port Best, Port Best and Ferris, I'm outside the toilet, and then um, old mate brings a bag of salami. He's like, mate, he does it all the time. Whenever he goes out, he's always got salami on you him. Know, you know what you should do next <laughs> he's time? salami guy. You know what you should do next time if you know that he's going to be at an event and you're going to be at the same event? Is take a couple of pieces of bread and some cheese. <laughs> 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 and when he offers it to you, just make a sandwich with him. Mate, I've got the gear. I've got the gear. I can do. I can do it now. I can do it properly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was. Uh, it was a very weird experience. Um, I'm still actually just trying to um, to deal with that. Um, so yeah, my wife cheated very quickly because we've been going for 40 minutes. This has been a great time, and I'm sure you've both got stuff to talk about. Um, so my wife cheated. In? And she raised, raised this the other night, and it's got nothing to do with Maddie and his bum or Andy with his weird illness. Um, she just felt really awkward about it. And she said, yeah, so um, G- uh, Rain, our, our daughter, said, can you please come and do some colouring for us? I said, yeah, that's great. I'm horrible when it comes to colouring. And if she says, can you please trace around something? I'm not like artistic in that regard. I'm really bad at it. Maddie, you're not a handyman. Andy, you're not an athlete. So we're all not good at something, right? <laughs> well, you were an athlete. Sorry, you're an ex You beat Japan. You beat Japan. So then I said to her, because she was amazing, I said, you know, you are really good at this. And she said, yeah, I've won awards before. I'm like, what do you mean? And she said, I once um, did a colouring competition for a restaurant, which was big in Sydney, I think it and it was for under seven. So she basically coloured it in, sent it in. She won a sick prize, which I think was a restaurant voucher or something else. Can't remember the restaurant name. I think it was a Mexican restaurant though. And she said, yeah, it was amazing. Got a prize. It was awesome. That is incredible that you can do that because it was a popular restaurant and she was sending it in. She said, look, the only thing is, and I don't want you to tell anyone this. I'm like, what? She said, I was 13. So she (laughs) sent as a 13 year old (laughs) an under sevens colouring in competition. And it made me think back to that show Couch Potato, which was on on Saturday mornings, I think, or Sunday mornings on the ABC. And they had a a competition that if you were a member of this show, Couch Potato, at the bottom of the screen every episode, they would scroll your number across the bottom of the screen. And if your number popped up, you would email or you'd, you'd send them a letter back then and go, this is my number I'd won. So I did that. I just picked one of the numbers, wasn't a member, and I just sent it in saying, yep, this is me, I'd won. And they sent me something back and they're like, look, 
Hey, Jared, thanks so much for watching the show. We um, have had a look and this definitely isn't your number. Um, but here, have an origami book. So I got something out of it. Yes. Uh, here's a side note about cash potato. So um, Grant Piero, who used to be the host. You remember Grant? No, I don't, I don't think I ever watched it. Okay. So uh, he hosted a kid show for what? Maybe uh, probably 10 years. I don't know. I'm, I'm taking yeah, a stab here. Hat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, so they used to make it a lot of the time here in Adelaide because that's where he was from. He used to fly back to Nova to do voiceovers when he was our voiceover guy. Um, but going back to the actual TV show, uh, he used to uh, do a lot of things for a hotel um, here in Adelaide uh, that I kind of grew up in but not really at the same time. Talk about it later. But uh, he hated kids. He absolutely hated <laughs> kids. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't know if I don't know if that's just something he had the hatred for before he started the show or after the show, but fun fact, hated kids. He's married to Marina Pryor, who's the opera singer. Oh yeah, she always sings at the Carols by the Domain or something like that, right? Every year. <laughs> All right. I'm just making shit so? up now. I got no are idea. They, are they doing that? Are they doing that this year with the whole COVID stuff or Probably not the Adelaide one because they love a good excuse to not do things these days. So Yeah, they're cancelling everything. The only thing that hasn't been cancelled yet is this podcast yet. Ooh. Boys, yeah. have you got anything else to update us on before we wrap up with the weirdest thing I'm going to ever ask you to do? Yeah, um, I can tell you where we're sitting in the charts. Oh, yeah! Oh, chart update. You'll be okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so um, we've gone down 15 oh, spots um, in, the <laughs> in the basketball chart across Australia. We're now number 43. Um, which isn't bad, you know, because there's like, there's probably 45, yeah, there's probably 45 basketball shows. So yeah, we don't talk basketball. That's probably the big thing. I mean, we don't talk basketball. Do you know what the funny thing is, is every time we mention that we're in the basketball charts, that's probably enough to keep us in the basketball charts. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Great point. Yeah. Basketball, basketball. All right. Uh, number 4,943 in Canada for all podcasts. Oh, wow. Yeah. I like that. Yeah. Yep. That's great. Um, we're number 2,927 in France for all podcasts. Yeah, there's a lot of people in France. Yeah, that's true. There really is. Um, uh, where it, uh, this, this one's pretty good, this one. Um, uh, 773 in the USA for sports. <laughs> I like that. There'd be a lot that's of sports podcasts yeah. over there. <laughs> How good is that? Um, also, uh, global reach for sports. Okay, so this is world, the world. Yeah. We're currently 507. Wow. If we top the, like, 500, that's that's a great achievement. And I think we can be doing more as well. Once we get together again, we'll put some more video content up yeah. and we'll – I think yeah. we're, we're, only, we're only scratching the surface, boys. No, absolutely. Yeah, we really are. Once we go to a video sort of situation, I think it will uh, – uh, Go great guns for us. And a final spot on the chart. All podcasts in the USA, we are number 7,330. Yeah, see, I love that. Yeah. And I love the fact that you haven't mentioned the Australian charts yet, which is brilliant nah, because we're obviously in- we're not in the... <laughs> 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 with the kind of key demographics. So obviously, we've got a lot of uh, friends in the United States and Europe and we've got a lot of enemies in South Australia. Um, so what I wanted to ask, <laughs> what I wanted to ask you boys to do, and I, I thought of this the other night, it's a little bit weird. Have you ever noticed, and I encourage everybody to do this unless you're driving, if you close your eyes really tight, so don't do it yet. If you close your eyes really tight, it will sound like you can hear the wind. So on three, I want you to close your eyes really. <laughs> no, there's no fart coming up. No, come <laughs> on. That's what I thought you were going to do. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, no. How did you uh, read me? Okay, so close your eyes really tight and you'll hear the wind on three. One, two, three. <laughs> no, no, this is real. Oh, we knew it was coming. We still did it. No, this is this is an actually a serious thing. Close your eyes really tight, and you'll hear the. Wind. I promise you. I promise. You, squint as hard as you can, and you'll hear the wind. Go. How weird is that? Yeah, that yeah. is weird. <laughs> What's weird is watching yeah, you do it. <laughs> it's so weird, and it looks funny doing it too. Yeah, it does look very funny. Yeah. Like so, um, well, that was a good way to end. Yeah, that's it. I think the other thing we need to the other yeah. thing we need to discuss is now that the press box app are back in their studio. Um, 
that you yeah. know they've been saying for a while that once they get back in there, they're going to invite us in. So, boys, we're waiting. No, they did say that. They did say that. Um, okay, there's a couple of things, Matty. On their latest episode, they had a crack at Fanta. You need to have a listen to that. Right. Um, the issue is, I don't reckon Andy and I will be let in the building because it is recorded in the Nova slash 5AA building, so Ooh. there's not much of a chance of us going in there. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh. No, nah, surely you'll be allowed in. <laughs> no, no, because um, what when we when we caught up with the staff a few weeks back for Jared's farewell redundancy thing, uh, one of the sales guys said that uh, my name came up in the uh, in the office uh, the day before because they had a client that needed something done, and they're like, "Oh, let's get Andy." He said he's always available for us, and then the big boss goes, "He's a competitor. You guys are not to talk to him at all." Oh wow! Really? Yeah. <laughs> So you're correct, Jared. I will be outside the building, um, yeah. but that's okay. I can connect to that that studio from here. <laughs> I think I've still got access to the um, the software. I reckon I've still got access, so I might take them off air and see what happens. <laughs> so we'll get this done. We will get this uh, best team men press box app collaboration done at some stage, some yeah. way, logistically. Uh, yep. But that will happen by the end of the year. All right. Follow us on the socials. Um, don't forget, if you have blood around any part of your body, go to a doctor. <laughs> um, we are not doctors. This has been great, boys. This has been a, it's been a long time, even though we dropped an episode last week or around last week. Well, are we back in the studio next week? Week after. Week after? Yeah. Yeah, sick. Well, this has been fun, though. No, it's been good. It's been good. Oh, actually, side note, can I just add something on at the end here? Do you remember it was either during Booze Team Man or Best Team Man where uh, you had tweeted something uh, and then I had said something else that you had tweeted and it was heaps awkward because you thought I was talking about something else until I said it was a kid weighing into a bloody plastic tube? Yes. Yeah. Can you go to uh, – can you get your internet up, your website yeah. thing, your Chrome? Yeah. You is too, this, Maddie. Is this part of the podcast? Yeah, this part of the podcast, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's a continuation, right? Are we going to so, like um, sexylover.com, that website you had, or is it? No, no, that's a boost team, man. This is best team, man. So yeah. this is family orientated shit right here. Uh, so go to babycreations.com.au. <laughs> Baby creations. Yeah. And then scroll down. Yeah. To baby care. Oh, no. Baby care. Yep. Y- yep. And oh. here it is. I told Kids you I'm to it. <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god. Hey, and while you're there, Andy, go to our yeah. Twitter. You put up a photo of yourself with Hugh Sheridan at I think a McDonald's ball or a Ronald McDonald house thing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. There's a photo of you singing with Hugh Sheridan and Josh Josh Miller from the Powerhouse Electricity Podcast put up a photo which yeah. looks like you've actually intentionally <laughs> Modeled that photo. It is hilarious. We're going to be quiet so we can hear your laugh. Just we're just going to wait. There's going to be silence just so Andy sees it. Hang on. Uh... <coughs> so it's on the best team men one, right? Yep. Okay. Alrighty, alrighty. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> <laughs> We'll have to post yeah, that. It's very good. Uh, take us out, Con. See you, boys. Man. See you, boys. Brought to you by the Brighton Trophy Centre. Cups, trophy, badges, medals. Yeah, yeah. yeah we do it better. Yeah. Best team, man. DTC, BTM, BTS. Yeah. Best team, man. Oh, yeah. Sweet. Okay. Oscar. Are you a podcaster? Maybe you've got that big idea and you're looking for a network to join. The multi-award winning Ozcast Network can get your content to eyes and ears all over the world. Join now for the first month free and you could be featuring this sound at the beginning of your podcast. Ozcast. Simply head to ozcastnetwork.com for details.